So today I'm going to be going through what I'm going to call the super scale or the 1313 slide scale um, that uh, is going to allow us to kind of find our way around most of the neck using only one pentatonic position and one little trick on top of that. Next time I'm going to go through the, uh, the same thing but from the fifth um, string root note and it, that's going to kind of complete our whole neck. Now the point of this is just to find our way around the neck without having to memorize a bunch of pentatonic patterns, uh, most of which we probably won't use a ton. So um, this example is going to be an A minor and uh, or C major. And now what we're going to do is we have a kind of our basic first position or uh, G major or E minor pentatonic shape. So this is going to be again an A minor. My first finger is going to be on the fifth fret sixth string and I'm going to assign a finger to a fret. I'm going to go one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. Now, if you notice, when I play this scale uh, shape, I have my first finger is consistent throughout all the strings. Now, so whether I'm on the fifth, sixth, fourth, third, second, or first string, my first finger is always on the same fret, while my later frets well, kind of depend on what string I'm on, whether I'm using my pinky or my third finger. This fret right here we're going to call the anchor fret, and it's going to be important to kind of give this a neutral name as opposed to kind of our root note fret, although it happens to be the root note if we're playing our minor pentatonic shape. Um, and the reason being is that when we move it to our relative major, we're going to have something neutral that we can call it. Now on this anchor fret, I'm going to put my third finger on it. Now I'm going to go one, three, one, three, slide. So I go before my anchor fret, one, three, go on to the fifth string, one, three, now I'm going to slide up. And going on to the fourth string, one, three, one, three, slide. And now for the second string, I do it to compensate and go up one more fret as opposed to where my finger naturally lies, which is on the seventh fret. I need to go to the eighth fret on the second string and one, three, one, three, slide. Now from here, I'm going from the third fret to the twelfth fret using one pentatonic shape and this little trick right here. So just to briefly go through that again, my anchor fret is where my first finger is the same, in the same fret, throughout that whole pentatonic shape. Put my third finger on the anchor fret, go one, three, one, three, slide. One, three, one, three, slide. One, three, one, three, slide. Now when I go to my major scale shape, so let's just say the relative of A minor is C, where my pinky is on the eighth fret on the sixth string, that same pentatonic shape works, so I don't really need to learn any different scales. And the important thing here is that my, my anchor fret stays the same too. So where my first finger is on something like my C major pentatonic shape, so this would be my G major pentatonic shape, and uh, put my third finger on that anchor fret now, one, three, one, three, slide, one, three, one, three, slide, one, three, one, three, slide. Now going backwards can be kind of a pain, but you can just kind of say the same thing in reverse. So this is going to be slide, uh, three, one, three, one, I'm going to go slide down here, three, one, three, one, slide, three, one, three, one. A couple things to keep in mind here is that the second string is always going to be our bugaboo string. What I mean by that is that we're always going to have to compensate for that second string when we do something like this. And that's that. Again, brings us from our third fret all the way up to our 12th fret without having to learn a bunch of different uh, scale positions. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, share, comment, let me know what you think, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.